So I'm sure most of you guys saw in the in-game news that the next Dokkan Fest unit on Global is officially going to be the tech transforming Gohan, which I'm personally super, super excited for because as you guys might know, I think he's the best TUR in the game right now and this is definitely a must summon for me. Now with that said, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at all of the potential events, banners, and awakenings that us global players can expect to see over the next couple of weeks to a month, essentially over the course of October from this new tech Ultimate Gohan campaign. And in order to do that, we're gonna be checking out the JP campaign for when he first arrived there, right? So uh, let's pop over to the Dokkan Wiki here. And this was the celebration that brought over the Gohan for JP. It was the Move Well and Play Well Summer Dokkan campaign. And the first thing we have here is a login bonus, pretty standard stuff, as well as some special missions for some stones, Kai's, Hercule statues, all that good stuff. And then from there, we have the Dokkan Festival banner for the new Gohan, as well as a new Int Supreme Kai and Kabito. We'll take a look at that in a second. And also a new category banner for the new Saviors category. Now, as I always say, uh, category banners are awful, so I would advise everybody once again to stay away from it unless you're a huge whale with like a lot of stones to burn, I guess. But for most people, just stay away from all category banners. Okay, after that, we have a Rising Dragon Carnival double race banner. So uh, the way I see it is that this celebration is kind of split up into two separate parts. Maybe not officially, but in effect, it's going to be one half with one banner with some new event, and then uh, in the second half, about two weeks later, there's going to be another new banner with some other new events. So for the first half of things, it's going to be the uh, Gohan banner. And then for the second half, about two weeks after, there's going to be a Double Rates banner. So this would be sometime in the middle of October with the Awakenings for the launch, the Oceanus Shenron, and uh, of course, double the SSR rates. And we also have a new Elder Kai banner which is, you know, something we always get, so nothing new. And also a Dragonstone sale. I don't remember what this sale looked like, but I'm sure it's going to be uh, pretty standard, maybe like one or two 32 stone packs, a couple of, um, you know, 90 stone packs or 91 stone packs, something like that, and maybe some of the smaller packs too. But overall, pretty standard Dragonstone sale, I'm sure. And we have the new stage for uh, the Dokkan event for Ultimate Gohan for his medals. And a renewal for the Saiyan Man story event. We'll take a look at that in a second as well, in terms of like how many stones we can get, and also the awakening that comes with this. And uh, some returning story events. So of course, this one is currently still active, so I'm guessing it's not going to be coming back this soon. But otherwise, we have the World Tournament Reborn event coming back, the uh, Videl Lairs the Fly event, the Gods and Majins event, the Raditz story event and also the Saiyan Saga story event. So from there, we have a new Extreme Z area event. When it came to JP, this was a return because they already had it before, but since we don't have it yet, this would be the first time we get the Int Raditz Extreme Z area along with finally his Extreme Z awakening. And of course, also a new Ultimate Clash. Uh, I forgot what the number we're currently on for Global is. It's definitely not 29, it might be like 25 or something like that, and uh, we might be getting a whole new set of uh, enemies for this as well, where the final boss is going to be a Golden Frieza, because that's what JP has, but I think it might be a little bit too early, so we might still just be getting the regular cast of characters with uh, Jiren as the final boss, but we'll have to see about that. Either way, we will be getting a new Ultimate Clash, and possibly a new Extreme Z battle. You know what? I think... We're definitely going to be getting a new Extreme Z battle event. It's just a question of which one, because for obviously the JP celebration, it was Super 17, but we're still missing the Tech Super Saiyan 3 uh, Broly Extreme Z Awakening, right? So we might get that instead of Super 17. We'll have to see, but it's going to be either Super Saiyan 3 Broly or Super 17 for the new Extreme Z battle. And uh, also potentially if we get Super 17, then we'll also be getting the return of the Buhan Extreme Z battle because the tech uh, South Kai Majin Bu would also be getting an Extreme Z awakening at the same time. And we also have the Extreme Z Dokkan Festival banner for the, for the Super 17 
and also another trash category banner stay away um you know these dokkan events available every single day for obvious reasons some more returning story events and this would be um i guess for the second half hold on let me see the dates here Okay, so we have some returning story events here. So I don't know if we're going to get this many returning story events for our celebration on Global. But uh, I'll just list them real quick. We have the Ultimate Android Saga one, the Cell Games, Mysterious Monster Cell, as well as the Androids story event. So yeah, possibly we'll get all of these maybe broken up into two halves. So like in the first half of the celebration, we'll get a few of these. In the second half, we'll get the rest. Um, we'll have to see exactly how they handle that. Obviously, when it comes to global and JP campaigns, there are uh, sometimes some differences, but for the most part, they do remain fairly similar. Okay, so yeah, more returning story events, and then the return of the Gohan and Goku slash Vegeta and Trunks Extreme Z area, and also a new weekend summon banner. We're going to be getting some tickets throughout the week through logins. Uh, which is this right here, the Weekend Summon Login bonus, as well as through some Weekend Summon missions. And uh, once the weekend comes around, we can use those tickets to summon on a new Weekend banner with the potential to pull some of the older LRs in the game. And we're also going to be getting, possibly, actually I'm not sure about this one because we already have it right now, but possibly some Golden Weekend missions or some extra stones and extra Kai's and the Bulma's battle prep event should be making a return which means of course that we're going to be getting a new world tournament okay this would be number 36 or it was number 36 for jp i forgot what number we're currently on for global maybe like 33 or something like that or 34 and uh oh maybe a little bit more maybe like 35 I don't feel like we're that far off as far as world tournaments go. But either way, uh, this might be the world tournament that gives us the Demon King Piccolo, the LR Demon King Piccolo, as the local reward. But I can't say for sure. It could still be LR Yamcha. But hopefully, it's the LR Demon King Piccolo. And for the uh, ranking rewards, I think we should be getting the uh, Bojack movie Trunks. So yeah, I'm going to say most likely we're going to get the Team King Piccolo this time as well, but don't get your hopes up too high. We'll have to see what uh, they decide to do with that, okay? So from there, we have the Rabbit Mob and Adventure of Gratitude events returning and uh, potentially new stages for Super Battle Road. And once again, this would be probably like in the second half, about two weeks after the uh, celebration first starts with the Gohan. But uh, yeah, potentially new stages, 10 new category stages, as well as a new um, Super Battle Road LR that we get from missions. We'll take a look at that in a second too. But uh, yeah, maybe new stages for Super Battle Road and also new stages for the Hero Extermination Extreme Z area event with two new Extreme Z Awakenings coming from that. Okay, so there's a quick overview. Let's uh, take a closer look at some of these events here that we were talking about, starting with um, actually, no, let's start with the banners first, right? I think I have the banner set up here. Yes, we do. Okay, so first we have the Gohan and Supreme Kai banner. And this, of course, was the JP banner. The global banner could look a little bit different, but generally speaking, they don't make too many changes. So I think it's probably going to be exactly the same. And we have Gohan, we have the Supreme Kai and Kabito, and then AGL Bardock, Fizz Piccolo, Int Kid Gohan, or sorry, Goku. Uh, Metal Cooler and STR Ultimate Gohan, along with some uh, SRs here for raising super attack. Overall, I think this is a pretty, you know, maybe slightly above average, but like pretty standard Dokkan Fest banner these days. And as far as overall overall value, I would give it like a 7, 7.5. But because this guy's here and I must have him, he significantly raises the value of this banner for me. And also, Honestly, I could still use most of these units, like I still need Bardock, I still need Piccolo. He might be one dupe away, and he's rainbowed, so he's the only unit on this banner that I just do not want to pull. But otherwise, yeah, it's not, a, it's not a bad banner at all. You guys definitely shouldn't feel too bad about summoning on this one. And uh, as far as the double rates banner goes, it's uh, fairly standard stuff. There's going to be a bunch of general SSR pool units being featured here, but overall, um, they're all actually quite good units. These two, actually these three, should be getting Awakenings around this time. And they're all excellent Awakenings. He's still a really good support unit. He's a good support unit. He's amazing. I would say almost crucial. No, I would say he's crucial for 
uh, extreme tech super bad road. So yeah, if you guys don't have him, then he's definitely a good pickup. Uh, Demon King Piccolo and Roshi are both solid. Nail's very good when paired up with a Piccolo. And uh, Thouser is not bad either. So we got some good featured units, even though they are available on every single banner. And the main reason that people are going to be summoning on this banner is not for the featured units, but rather for the, you know, higher chance to pull unfeatured LRs. So it's going to be 10% for featured SSRs, as opposed to your regular 5%, and 10% for unfeatured SSRs compared to your regular uh, 5% as well, right? So that is the double rates banner we can expect to see in the middle of October or closer to the end. And from there, we have the renewal for this story event, the... Uh, Go forth, Hero of Justice, and the increased drop category here is Movie Heroes, and there's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 Dragonstones up for grabs from the stages, as well as two more from Missions, and uh, we also get a Token Awakening for this tech Great Saiyan Man 2, which uh, uh, we might take a look at today, but if we run out of time, then maybe not. Either way, it's a exchange unit from Saiyan Man 1 and 2 into just Saiyan Man, and uh, it's pretty cool, okay? So after that, we have the new Super Battle Road stages, stages 31 to 40, and the 10 new categories are gonna be representatives of Universe 7, Wicked Bloodline, Time Travelers, Universe 6, Movie Heroes, Goku's Family, Vegeta's Family, Youth, Super Saiyans, and Final Trump Card. I hope we get these, because I'm already done with the new Extreme Super Battle Road stages, and uh, I need something else to do, something, you know, slightly challenging. So, yeah, really hoping these guys, or these stages rather, make their way over to Global for this campaign as well. And uh, for the new LR, it's going to be the LR, Goku, and Gohan. And from there, we have the uh, Extreme Z Area event for Raditz. And it's pretty standard stuff. You have a certain pool of units you can bring to take on the stage and uh, collect his medals. And these are the units you can bring. There are two characters or two units that are mandatory, which is the Int Raditz as well as the Int Nappa from uh, the Saiyan Saga story event. Okay, so after that, let's take a quick look at the animations for Gohan as well as the Supreme Kai and Kabito. And then we'll get into the details for some of these units and awakenings. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to just shut up for a second. You guys enjoy. So there you have it, the Ultimate Gohan's animations, and also of course Kibito and uh, and uh, Supreme Kai that fuse into Kibito Kai. Uh, really good overall. Uh, I have no complaints, especially for the Gohan. I love that active skill, and I think the animations are very solid too. They're not like blowing me away or anything like that, but uh, just overall, really, really clean animations. So there we go. Let's pop over to the Dokkan Wiki again. And uh, we're going to quickly go over the details for this guy. I already did in a previous video from, I think, yesterday or two days ago. But for anybody that missed it, uh, you can still, you know, find out what he does. If you guys already know what he does, let's skip ahead like a minute or two. 
and we'll get into the other guys. Alright, so his leader skill is going to be Saviors, which is a new category, or Hybrid Saiyans, category Q plus 3, HP plus 130%, or attack, or sorry, and attack and defense plus 170. So HP 130, attack and defense 170. As far as the Saviors category goes, um, it consists of characters who save the day in a crucial moment. And we can take a quick look here. Um, I would say overall, it's a okay category. You know, it's definitely not like one of the better ones. It's just like pretty average, in my opinion. And uh, the good thing is, of course, you can couple this with a uh, hybrid Saiyans team as well. So you can do a kind of a combination of, you know, Saviors and hybrid Saiyans. Because Saviors alone is not that exciting. Uh, super attack, Z sword flash, or slash, man I can't read today, greatly raises attack and defense and causes immense damage to enemy, and that is 50% increase to attack and defense for 99 turns every single time he supers. His passive is attack and defense plus 140%, guards against all attacks, E plus 1 at the start of each turn up to key plus 3, plus an additional attack plus 40% within the same turn when guard is activated and his active skill, Potential Unleashed, can be activated starting from the 5th turn from start of battle, once only, and of course, he becomes Ultimate Gohan. His links, Brainiacs on the Family, Saiyan Lineage, Cold Judgment, Revival, Power Bestowed by God, and Fierce Battle. And categories are Hybrid Saiyans, Resurrected Warriors, Majin Buu Saga, Goku's Family, Siblings Bond, Revenge, Rapid Growth, and Saviors. Okay, so once he transforms into Ultimate Gohan, his super attack greatly raises attack for one turn, causes immense damage with a medium chance of stunning the enemy. And passive is key plus 3, attack and defense plus 158%, guards against all attacks, plus an additional attack plus 58% for the rest of the battle when guard is activated. Attacks effective against all types when facing only one enemy whose HP is 58% or more, or when facing a Majin Buu Saga. Category enemy, he gets 3 new links, infighter, same warrior race, and shocking speed. His additional 58% attack is calculated separately for a total boost of attack plus 307.64% after being attacked. So yeah, that is the ultimate Gohan. Um, you guys might be able to tell just on paper why I think he's the best TOR in the game, but of course, either later today or tomorrow. I'll be doing a global preview showcase to show you guys exactly how busted this dude is. Okay, so let's move on to some other stuff now. Um, why don't we talk about the EZA for Super 17? Like I said, I'm not sure if it's going to be him or the tech Super Saiyan 3 Broly, but assuming it is him, his leader skill is going to be extreme AGL types key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 130%, and super AGL types key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 90%. Super attack greatly raises attack and defense for one turn, causes immense damage, and greatly lowers defense. And his passive is damage received minus 40%, key plus 1 up to 3, attack plus 30% up to 150%, and damage received minus 6% up to 30%. With each attack received, target Goku category allies, chance of performing a critical hit plus 17%. Overall, he's just a very impressive tank that can also deal out a really respectable amount of damage and also can provide some support to target Goku um, you know, units on your team. Just a very good Extreme Z Awakening, nothing to uh, really complain about here. And now let's move on to the tech South Kai Majin Buu. And his leader skill after Extreme Z Awakening is Tech Types Key Plus 2, HP Attack and Defense plus 70%, Super Attack raises defense for one turn, causes supreme damage, and greatly lowers defense. And his passive is Key Plus 3, Attack plus 100%, plus an additional Attack and Defense boost by up to 100%. The more HP remaining, the greater the stats boost, reduces damage received by 20% when HP is 80% or more, and recovers 5% HP at the end of turn in which attack was received. From there, let's talk about the Tech Majin Vegeta Extreme Z Awakening. Leader skill is all types key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 60%, super attack causes supreme damage to all enemies with a chance of stunning them, 
and passive is attack and defense plus 60%, raises key by up to 3, and attack and defense by up to 60%. The more HP remaining, the greater the key and stats boost, plus an additional attack plus 88% when performing a super attack when HP is 60% or less once only. And next is the Fizz Good Boo. Uh, leader skill is all types key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 60%, super attack raises attack for 1 turn, and causes supreme damage and greatly lowers defense, and passive is attack and defense plus 66%, key plus 1 up to key plus 3, and attack and defense plus 22% up to 66%, with each attack received, recovers 30% HP when HP is 40%. Or less. And just to clarify, we get the Extreme Z Awakening medals for this boo as well as the Tech Majin Vegeta from the new stages of the Hero Extermination Extreme Z Area event. And lastly, we have the Int Raditz Extreme Z Awakening. And of course, he has his own Extreme Z Area event. Leader skill is Low Class Warriors, key plus 6, HP and defense plus 60%, and attack plus 100%, or Int types, key plus 3. HP attack and defense plus 50%. Super attack causes supreme damage to all enemies and lowers defense. And passive is attack and defense plus 80% at the start of the turn, key plus 6, attack and defense plus 60%, and super class enemies attack and defense minus 10% when facing two or more enemies. Links are Saiyan lineage, Saiyan warrior race, coward, brutal beatdown, nightmare, prepare for battle, and shattering the limit. And we still have a few other awakenings to talk about the Fizz um, launch, the Int Oceanus Shenron, as well as the AGL uh, Supreme Kai. Okay, the West Supreme Kai, that is. So why don't we start with launch first? And her leader skill is Peppy Gals, category key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 120%, super attack causes supreme damage and lowers attack and defense. And her passive is that she sneezes and changes personalities and transforms into the blonde hair launch right here. Okay, so blonde hair launch causes supreme damage and greatly lowers attack and defense. Passive is attack and defense plus 120%, E plus 3 plus an additional attack and defense plus 60%, high chance of performing a critical hit and launches two additional attacks, each of which has a high chance of becoming a super attack for six turns from start of turn. So all this stuff right here is active for 6 turns from the start of battle and she seals the super attack of the attacked enemy when there is another Peppy Gals category ally attacking in the same turn. So believe it or not, launch on the right team is actually one of the hardest hitting TURs in the entire game because she has a pretty significant boost right on her, on her passive. She also can launch up to two additional super attacks on top of the hidden potential super attack, so possibly up to four super attacks in a turn, which uh, each have a high chance of becoming a critical hit, which is a 50% chance. And uh, she's just insane. Like, she is a very, very insane uh, unit after awakening. And uh, of course, she also will seal the enemy when there's another Peppy Gals attacking with her. Her links are Battlefield Diva, Flea, Metamorphosis, Berserker, uh, Incredible Adventure, Goddess of the Dragon Balls, and Shattering the Limit. And her categories are Peppy Gals, Transformation Boost, DB Saga, and Earthlings. But there's launch for you. Uh, super excited for her awakening. And then we have the Oceanus Shenron. Leader skill is Shadow Dragon Saga, category key plus 3, HP attack and defense plus 120%. Super attack raises defense for one turn, causes supreme damage, and seals enemy super attack. Passive is key plus 3, attack and defense plus 120%, plus an additional attack and defense plus 60%, and launches an additional super attack when the target enemy is in attack down or defense down status, attacks effective against all types, and high chance of stunning the attack enemy when the target enemy super attack is sealed. She also has the potential to be one of the harder hitting TURs in the game, not as you know, hard as uh, launch hits, but she still is right up there, I think in the top 15 right now, of the hardest hitting TURs. And I can't wait for Peppy Gals to get like a 170% lead, because that category is gonna be bonkers, man. Um, okay, so Link's Battlefield, did I say this already? Battlefield Diva, Metamorphosis, Cold Judgment, Shadow Dragon, Speedy Retribution, GT, and Shattering the Limit. And she's in only two categories right now, Shadow Dragon Saga and Peppy Gals, okay? 
Now, lastly, we're gonna take a look at the uh, AGL West Supreme Kai's Awakening. And this should actually be coming in the first half of the celebration, although I don't know what they're gonna do with it. So maybe she'll come at the same time as the launch and Oceanus Shenron Awakenings. We'll have to see. But as far as our leader skill goes, it's Realm of Gods, Category Q plus 4, HP attack and defense plus 100%, Super Attack, Sacred Light Bullet, greatly raises attack and defense for one turn, causes supreme damage, and her passive is attack and defense plus 100%, guards against all attacks within the same turn after receiving an attack, and then Realm of Gods, Category Allies, attack and defense plus 40%, and chance of performing a critical hit plus 10%. Okay, so essentially the changes here is that uh, this was her only passive before, but now she can, you know, do some damage and tanking of her own. And uh, links are Battlefield Diva, Innocence, Courage, Shocking Speed, Godly Power, Supreme Power, and Fierce Battle. And she's in Realm of Gods, Majin Buu Saga, and Patara. So that is going to take us back to the beginning here. And uh, that is everything that we can potentially expect to get from this upcoming campaign on global it should be a long one it should last at least three weeks to possibly four and uh, we'll be getting a lot of stuff i dare say as much if not possibly more content than the worldwide celebration provided us which is uh pretty sad if you think about it but uh, yeah i'm excited for it man i can't wait for the gohan um i can't wait for the awakenings for the uh peppy gals as well and uh, obviously potentially super battle road potentially new extreme z awakenings all that stuff is uh, highly welcome at the moment on global actually both versions but uh, jp is going to be getting a new golden frieza so they're good but uh, yeah us global players should be in for a treat for the celebration hopefully fingers crossed anyways that is the uh, celebration preview let me know in the comments down below what you guys are the most excited for out of all the stuff we talked about and uh, that's pretty much the video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, as always. And if you liked today's video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button. Join the Tiger Squad now, and while you're at it, hit that notification bell, too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.